<laughs> so we're going to play with bordering on the edge today. I'm going to use the magnetic hoop. Isn't this cool? And I'm going to use the continuous frame hoop to make a big, long, continuous design. <laughs> Isn't that what you want to do? And look, oh my gosh, it turned out. Where is it? Where's the join? Can't even see the join. It's perfect. You know what they call that in the world of embroidery? Nailed it. <laughs> so if you want to nail it too, come on and watch. I'm Kathy, and this is Sewing Tech Talk. So we have a giveaway for today's video. It's the Clover Anywhere Ruler, which you can stick on your machine, on your on the front of your sewing surface. It's not permanent, and you can restick it. I don't think it goes anywhere, but uh, it's a fun prize. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. So good luck. So I'm making this uh, little summer robe. And here it is. I love the fabric. I love how everything was coming together, but it was a little plain. I want something a little bit nicer when I'm wearing my little summer robe out to drink my coffee in the morning on the patio. I decided it needed some, uh, maybe some, some stitching around the border. And that's a great opportunity to give you a visual for a couple of hoops that, uh, that really make it easy to hoop up and to stitch around the border or stitch just about anywhere. This one's been around a while. It's called the continuous border hoop. And you're going to see how simple it is to hoop something up with this hoop. It's one piece, unlike any other hoop. Now, hoops are officially called frames in the industry. So it's called the continuous border frame. It's kind of like a clamshell. And you'll see how the fabric goes in. This has been around for a while. So we're going to play with that. But there's a brand new hoop I wanted to share with you, and it fits on most newer machines. We'll talk about that when we get a chance to put it on. And it is a magnetic frame. Uh, it's a baby lock magnetic frame. Brother makes one as well. And so uh, this is a pretty cool frame. After we play with the continuous border frame, we're going to play with this one. And we'll talk all about how, uh, how it goes on your machine and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's get started. So I decided I wanted to put a continuous border embroidery around the edge of this little robe that I'm making. And I think it really dresses it up. So I want to show you that. We're going to use the continuous border function on the machine. And I've already done another video that talks a lot about that feature. And that's called, Could You Repeat That? So if you want a lot more information on using this feature in the machine, there's a handout for that and there's a special video for that. I do have a handout for today's video and it does talk about the two different hoops uh, more than it talks about that continuous border feature. So both handouts together would be sweet. So now, how did I get to where I needed to get? Well, what I did is I found a design within the machine that I really like and I hope you can see it. This is that design that has been repeated once to give me two different designs. And I did use that continuous border feature to do that. What I want you to notice while we're here is when I do use that feature to repeat the design, it literally groups the different colors together. So this is a three color design. And because I use that feature to group them, it's gonna do the lavender first and then the green and then the sea mist. And it's literally gonna go through that entire color sequence, stitching these and then these, and then these, and then these. So I'm really only changing threads a couple times. And that could be really, really uh, a fun a way to save time if you're going to be doing a whole bunch <laughs> like I'm going to be doing. So let me show you how I got there. So I have this in the memory. We can come back because I did tweak it and I want to come back to my exact size one. But let's go back and let's pull it up from the beginning so you can see how that works. So I'm going to go home. Now this design is built into the machine, so I'm going to go to embroidery. It's not under any of the specific baby lock specific designs. It is under category two. And if I go to number two, you can see there's more, it's more linear. There's this, this is where a lot of the border type embroideries are on this machine. Maybe a different location in your machine. 
and I looked at all of them and I actually just fell in love with this one. I think it's really pretty. So when I touch it, it shows me that design and uh, all the different colors and the dimensions and I hit set and now it comes to the embroidery edit screen where I can play with it. Now I want to change the size of it and I want to repeat it. So I'm going to go to edit and the continuous border repeat function is this little series of boxes. There's like nine boxes and some of them are dark and some of them are light. So when I touch that, it brings me to a new screen. And this is where I can add on to this design. I can add, take this design and repeat it in other words. So I basically, I don't want it to be in that orientation. So I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to come back and I'm just going to rotate it. Now in my design, these little larger motifs down here, they're on the top. So I'm going to rotate it once in that direction. Pretty easy. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. So when I come back to that continuous border function, I can add one on the bottom and it automatically joins them, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and shoot that off to the middle of the screen and Okay, now I can come in and I can change the size of this. So when I come in and I change the size, I can, I can just, I can do the feature where I'm changing the size up 20% and down 10%. Now this machine also includes a feature where I can recalculate the stitches. If I needed to do that, I could make the design so much larger or so much smaller, up to 200% larger or 60% smaller. But I'm not really doing that with this design. If I was doing that, I would have done that before I repeated the motifs. Because every time you do that, it wants to take it back to the original. I'm not doing that, so we're good. So now, they're all grouped together. When I change the size of them, I can, I can change it up to... I'm, now this hoop I'm going to be using, the continuous border hoop, it's 4 by 12. That means that's the embroiderable area that I have to use. But I don't want the design to be that big because I want to be able to maneuver it around when I get it hooped up. It's a super easy hoop to hoop, but I still need to be able to maneuver it around. So I took my design down to about, about 10 inches. And like I said, I already put mine in memory, so the exact size I need I already have in there. And then I knew I could make it a little bit wider because I wanted to show out just a little bit more. I made it a little bit bigger. <laughs> well, you can see it's a good thing I really kind of messed around and did it the exact way I wanted it before I showed you on the camera. So anyway, I got mine all better. So let's take it down just a little bit so I want to show you the next feature that's super important for this continuous border hoop. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to come back to that continuous border feature. Now, I need alignment marks if I'm going to join one of these motifs to the other. These buttons are where I can increase the number of repeats or decrease. I can do it this way or this way. Like I said, go get that handout. There's a, this is a powerful feature that you can do a lot with. But I'm going to come on up to this mark right here, which is the little arrow coming down to a line. Now what's key about this is this will put alignment marks anywhere I want around the design. I can put a ton of them there. But I really only need marks up here and marks down here. So when I join up, I can see where to join up the designs. So why is it a big deal? Well, if you're looking at this design, you can see that there's no real part of this design that comes up to the very corner of that boundary box, right? There's none down here and there's none up there. I need a mark there so I can know exactly where I can join these two together. Because there's no stitching there, but I do need some mark to show me. So if I simply just touch the icons where I want the marks, they're small, but they're right there. I could even put one in the middle if I really want to, and I can put them all the way around this one motif. But I also need them around the bottom motif. So I'm going to touch this arrow, I get a box around that, and I need marks down there, don't I? So now I have marks there and marks there, and I can use those when I'm realigning the design up to stitch the next motif.
very key. And it's a super cool, powerful feature on this machine so that I can make anything match. I can make it as big as a shower curtain if I want to because I can match it sideways, up, down. Those mark, depending on where I put them, it's really going to help me line up the next one where I come up to. And I'm using it with this hoop, but you can use it with any of the hoops that that are available. It literally makes physical marks that you're going to help. It's going to help you move the machine to where you want to go. So now I have my marks. Now what they're going to do is those marks are going to stitch out at the very end of my design. They're super big, easy to take out. So I don't need to do anything else with this design. I need to send it off to embroidery. And there it is. Now, that's not the one I'm going to use. Let me pull up the one that I'm going to use that I have in the memory of the machine. And then we'll come over here and we'll get this all hooped up. And I'm going to show you, talk about some of the supplies too. So let me pull up that design and we'll talk about how we're going to put this in the hoop. So. There it is. Now let's talk about this hoop. So now I've already got started and I have my marks are stitched up here. I want to talk a little bit about the supplies before we get right into the hoop. This is the continuous embroidery hoop and I've already showed it to you. It's, the, it's amazing because you can hoop while the hoop is on the machine, which is one of the features that makes it super easy. So I'm going to put the hoop on the machine, get everything out of the way. Now when I slide the hoop onto the machine, I'm going to hold this to slide it on. I want to make sure everything stays in alignment and I'm going to put down the ledge and here's the hoop ready to go. Let's talk about some of the supplies though. What I did is I kind of decided where I wanted my design to be. I took a ruler and a chalk marker. Any removable marker will do. Test it on your fabric first. I could have even pressed a crease in there with my iron if I didn't want to mark it at all. So I decided where the center of my design was and I made a chalk mark right on that line. So now I know that's the center line of the design and I'm also going to have those marks that I made when I put the alignment marks into the machine to stitch. So if it's not matching, it's not the machine's fault, it's mine. So do make your marks. Remember, if you're using the continuous border hoop, that this is connected on the right hand side. So this is truly for dancing on the edge of a garment, pillowcase, quilt, whatever you want to be stitching on. The area is 4 by 12, but the, the fabric can only go so far into the hoop. So if I'm taking my fabric, I can put it on up here slide it on between the layers of the hoop and under the foot and it can only go so far. So you have to keep that in mind, right? So now what I also did is I'm going to use the stabilizer that's appropriate for my, my project, right? This project, super simple, very nice fabric. I'm only using a medium weight tearaway stabilizer. This is Floriani medium weight tearaway. Use the stabilizer that works for your project. So if you're doing a specialty project that requires wash away, tear away, fuse, it doesn't matter of the, <laughs> the, the stabilizer you use with this hoop. It's just a hoop or frame as they say in the industry. And I'm going to stabilize just as I would for the appropriate embroidery that I'm going to do. And another thing I did is I kind of want to get this when I rehoop. I kind of want to get this design approximately where I want it to go. I'm going to finesse it, but I wanted to be able to see on the machine the marks to help me kind of get it in the perfectly, not perfectly, but in a good spot before I kind of finesse it. So what I did is I took some uh, tape and a marker and I made some, put the tape on the hoop and I made some marks. Now on the hoop, there's little lines on the side that help you know where the center of the hoop is. And you can use any one of those alignment, line, alignment marks to kind of help you get this, um, get it right kind of where you want it to be. 
going before you finesse it. So those are kind of helpful. Now enough yamma yamma, <laughs> let's get started. So I'm going to say that I want to join up my I want to join up my next motif. Now I'm going to pull this down so that I have my marks right here. I don't know if they're easy to see, but I have them right there. And I'm going to find this kind of a spot that's kind of close to where I want it to be. I'm going to kind of match those marks that I have. Now the one thing that's great about this hoop is you get it kind of sort of close. And it's kind of sort of close. And I'm going to hoop it now. Are you ready? One side is hooped. Isn't that easy? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to kind of alignment. Now I can do this while it's on the machine. You can always take the hoop off, lay it on a flat table, and it might be easier to see some of these marks also. So I'm going to bring it on up here. Click that lever down. If I don't think that's a good adjustment, I pop it up. I move it over to where I think it's better. And then I just keep clamping it down. Now the stable arts that I'm using, I basted it to the inside of the fabric in here. And yes, it's kind of loose still, but we're going to fix that in just a little bit when we get it more precise. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go down to the corner of the design and I'm just going to touch my trial marker and take my design down to that corner. Now on this machine I have a little red light that comes down and I hope you can see it. It's going to be kind of challenging to see and I'm literally going to put my mark that the machine stitched out previously on that design. I can see I'm a little bit farther away so I'm just going to release the hoop and bring everything down kind of where that mark is and click that one down. Now I'm going to bring down the other one and I'm literally going to tell the machine show me that mark. So all I have to do is touch the button and the machine goes to that second mark to see if I'm good to go. I can see I'm kind of close. Now here's my center line. Let's check that out. Wow, <laughs> that's right on. <laughs> I'm kind of lucky. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to finesse the fabric in the hoop by literally just pulling a little bit on the side. I can release it if I need to. But quite frankly, this is working well for this design. I feel like I'm pretty much good to go. Now, if I wasn't talking and I was just concentrating on how I was positioning that, you could easily see that it, this hoop's going to make it go really fast to go from one motif to the other. And I can trial my design. I can go around to any of those four, four, eight, locate, no, six, eight, all the different marks that are going around. I have the center line, I have the two marks right here, and I'm literally just going to use my trial button to go to those parts. So I think I've kind of done it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch my next motif. When it comes to the very end, we'll come back and I'll show you how it makes those align, it stitches out those alignment marks. It's going to stitch them in the last color of the design. They're super easy to take out. So I think I just, I'm going to do a couple little checks here. I'm going to get to stitching and then and when we come back, we'll see those and we'll talk about that super sexy new magnetic frame. <laughs> I'll see you soon. So we came up to the part where I'm going to stitch these little marks. I've already stitched one. So the machine is going to go to this corner and these corners down here and stitch those marks out. So when I hit start, it's going to finish up this part of the design. Remember, it stitches this last color is when the marks come in. going to stitch each one and then clip the threads so they're easy to take out. Now I'm ready to reposition. Da -da -da! 
So it made these marks, but I really don't need those. What I really need is these marks down there. And I realize I misspoke last time. So let me show you really quickly again, because it's super important how this just gets repositioned. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, let's reposition. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the machine that I want to be at this lower right corner of the next design easy. I go to the trial key and I tell the machine to go to that part of the design. Now, I'm going to move the design as I need to, but let's just reposition and I'm going to show you how that works. So I release the hoops, the hoop clamps, <laughs> and I'm just going to move the design down. Now, I want to make sure that the needle is going to be right where that right, that it was the upper right hand corner. Now it's the lower right hand corner of the design. Got it? So I am going to turn on the W plus, which shines my little light. I'm going to manipulate the fabric so that that light is shining right down there. And I can even put the needle down if I want to. Needles right in that mark. So now I'm going to adjust the front and the back part of it so that it's laying nice in the front and we're going to do the back. That's pretty simple. Remember, you can always do this on a flat surface and take the hoop off. I just want to show you the fancy way to do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle out of the fabric and I need to position that back mark, right? Now before I said I was going to go back to that back mark, but it hadn't been stitched yet. <laughs> so where am I going to go? I want to go back to the center back because there's no marks there yet, but I want to make sure this is aligned. So on my trial key, I'm going to go to the back center of this design because that's where I have my chalk mark. I'm going to adjust my fabric and I'm going to put that mark on the chalk mark of the machine. And now I'm going to clamp my hoop down. Make a few little adjustments and that's how quick and easy it is. So use your marks to join as you're going on up and use your chalk mark to make sure that you've aligned it so that it goes the straight way. It's pretty simple, right? So this hoop, pretty sexy, but there's another hoop that I really want to show you. So I'll stitch this out later. Let me show you that magnetic hoop. So we're not going on longer than gone with the wind today. So let's take this one out. Now I have this design in the memory, but I'm going to put it in the memory again because I've positioned it perfectly for this hoop and I'm going to come back later and do that. So I'm going to put it in the memory again, which is going to save all my positioning. And as long as I don't take it out of this hoop, I'm able to good, I'm good to go to get it back in there. So I hope that makes sense. So let me talk about where I'm going to use this magnetic hoop. Now, I figured if I put this design around the bottom, I really kind of need it on the back yoke too, right? So, a back yoke of the garment, here it is now, they're traditionally a challenge to hoop. Why? Because we have all the sleeves coming in here. This one happens to have a bunch of gathers down here. Oh my goodness, it's hard to get it in the hoop because you have all these different varying thicknesses and you may even have some parts that don't even hit the outside edge of the hoop. That's why a magnetic hoop is great for hard to get to areas. Also good for doing machine quilting with embroidery. Oh my gosh, very cool. But let's talk about that hoop and what you got to do, uh, why it's different. So here it is. So here is the standard five by seven hoop for the baby lock Altair, right? Comes with the machine. Now this hoop 
is the magnetic hoop and it is it looks a little bit different right well first and foremost you can see that this hoop if I line everything up it has to be wider to accommodate these magnets so the machine needs to recognize that this hoop is different even though it knows a 5 by 7 area it needs to know that it's over just a little bit to the right to accommodate for the thickness it's a good time to talk about machine updates and upgrades so a lot of times a machine will have an update and what does an update do an update is something that will um, make the machine run a little bit better. They've discovered something that the machine can do that it couldn't do when the machine first came out. So when the Altair first came out, this hoop wasn't available. So we have to tell the machine all about how to use this hoop. Wasn't didn't come out with the Altair. But it can came out now, right? So we have to do an update to let the machine know how to work this hoop. Pretty simple. But there are different, uh, different than an update is an upgrade. Many times the engineers, they're sewing engineers, who knew? Coming up with new tech. That's all about sewing tech talk. New tech that the machine could do that it absolutely the machine couldn't do when it first came out. So that's an upgrade. It adds something to the machine that the machine absolutely couldn't do before. New feature, a new technique, a new function. That's what an upgrade is. Updates, free. Upgrades, yeah, you have to make a little bit of investment if you want that feature. So let me talk about how we're going to do an update for this machine. Now this machine's already been updated, but I can talk you through how it happens. Now, for an update, what you will do is you'll go to the website, in this case babylock.com, and you'll find this machine and it will list all of the updates for the machine and what the different updates do. There's specific instructions for each and every machine how to do that. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to download that update on to a USB drive and the USB drive needs to be have nothing else on it no designs or anything like that talks all about that in the instructions. So what you're going to do is you're going to load it onto here. If you have concerns that you don't want to update your machine, I get it. I understand. You know, you can actually call the store and either have them help talk you through it or you could take your machine in and they will help you do it there. I would call first, make sure staffing is there to be able to help you. If you want to get an upgrade, those are available from the store as well. So, depending on how you want to do it, no stress, but I'm going to show you basically how it works. Okay? Okay. So, we don't have a hoop on the machine. For this particular machine, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to turn the machine off and then I'm going to turn it on again. Now I want you to be able to see over here as well. So the machine is going to recalibrate itself when it starts up, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to take the machine, I'm going to turn it off. It's all asleep now. And then I'm going to turn it back on, but I'm going to turn it on in a way I've never done before. I'm going to hold this button when I turn it on. And when the machine turns on, normally it would be calibrating itself, right? But now it comes up to a screen that you may have never seen before. It's going to show you two different USB ports. There's two on the machine. I stick the update that I've put on the USB in whichever port I choose. I touch that icon and then the machine does the rest. It's a little bit more complicated for an update but not much more. So that's how you would update your machine. It's going to take it a couple minutes, so be patient. Don't turn it off while it's doing it. But it's a pretty simple process. But once again, you don't want to do it. Call the store. They can help you. Or here's a thought. When's the last time you took your machine in for service? Hmm? 
you take your machine for a service, you know they like a spa treatment once a year. Take your machine in for service and say, hey, make sure you update it for me. That's pretty cool. So now, I didn't go through the process because she's already been updated. I'm going to turn her off. Turn it back on again. And because I didn't have that button pressed, it's going to go through its normal opening sequence where it's going to calibrate itself and make sure everything is good. Pretty cool, right? Now let's get to stitching with that magnetic hoop. I'd like to go to the screen and I'm going to show you exactly how I've modified this one design to stitch on the back of my little robe here. So here's my magnetic hoop. Now if I had not updated the machine, it would not recognize this hoop. It's still a five by seven. So I've already done my design. You know I probably did that, even though I, because I knew you were coming. But let me show you the process that I did when I brought it on up. So I picked up that same design. You probably remember where it was. There it is. Now I'm going to hit set. Now, I'm going to modify it for this frame. I kind of want to see the frame. It's a 5 by 7 field. I can come up here and I can see, I can find my 5 by 7. There it is. Okay, and it gives me the outline for that. Now, I know I want to make this bigger. And remember how I told you before I could recalculate? I'm going to make it significantly bigger. So let's do that. So let's go into size. Recalculate. Okay. Now, I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to make it... I forget how much I made it. I think I made it about 6 by about 4. So let's just do that. I know I have it in memory, but let me show you how I did that. So I'm going to take it out to six. Oops. Pretty close. Now I'm going to make it tall for that four. I think I only did three now that I think about it. Something kind of like that. It really changes it, doesn't it? It really made it much bigger. Okay, now I'm still going to use that in continuous border function even though I don't have room to do two of these. So I'm going to rotate it and I have the, oops, rotate it 90 degrees. I think that's the right orientation for how I'm going to hoop it. And I'm going to go back to that continuous border because what is the key thing there I need to join? I need the alignment marks. So I'm going to make alignment marks on the four corners of the design. Okay, and that's going to help me. After I stitch it out, that's going to help me join everything together. Let's go to embroidery and let's hoop this on up. Okay, so now we're going to come back over there to the hoop. And here's the hoop, and it has magnets on the side of it. Now, I'm going to pop the magnets off. There's a large magnet top and bottom. They're pretty powerful, so you don't want to get your fingers caught in there. And then on the side, there's two. Did I mention they're pretty powerful? When you store it, there's little cardboard strips that come with it, and you could put those in there. It makes it easier to pop the magnets off. like I said. Okay, now let's put the hoop on the machine. Now, I've taken my fabric and I have stabilized it by putting some stabilizer on the back of it. Now, I basted my stabilizer down. I didn't use a fusible. This is still that Floriani medium weight tearaway. Why? because I have all these gathers right here and I didn't think the fusible would work so well with those. So what I did is I just basted the stabilizer on and I'm going to put it approximately where I think I want it to go on that magnet, magnetic hoop base and I've made myself some chalk marks. Now I 
They've only, st I haven't stitched the one yet, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up now to my chalk marks. So I'm gonna use that trial feature to go to the part where I really want that to match. I'm gonna go to the line that I made. I wanna go to the center of that. So I'm gonna use the trial feature to go to the center part of that. And I'm gonna turn on my light once again and I want that to shine right down here on that mark that I made in chalk. It's the center middle of where I want this design. No, it's not. It's the center of the side where I want this design, right? So now, here it is. You can see parts of it, it would be really hard to hoop, right? If it was a, just a traditional hoop where I'm putting one inside the other. So let's take these magnets and put them back on. I'm going to put the one on the back first and they find their happy place. You don't have to do it, but keep your fingers out of the way. So here we go. Snaps right on. Now I'm going to adjust a little bit. Make sure everything's kind of where I want it to be. Take my second magnet and I'm going to use it to kind of pull out my fabric and it's going to pop, find its happy place. Here's the cool thing. I can move it just a little bit to get everything where I want it to be. I can kind of make sure that it's straight. How? Well, I'm gonna use that trial key. I'm gonna go down to the very bottom and am I still on that mark? Well, I'm off just a little bit. So I'm gonna scoot everything down. I could take the magnet off and put it back on if I wanted to, but didn't need to. Now it's time for my other magnets. Just for fun, I'm gonna put it back in the middle, bring them up, and I'm gonna put them on one at a time, making sure it holds that fabric nice. Seems pretty good. Now I can use my trial keys to make sure I did a good job. Looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it. And then when I finish stitching it, then I'm just gonna use my marks to do the exact same process I did with the continuous hoop and move it on down. Well, I did a lot of talking, but um, I think, I think that you can see that it's pretty simple to go ahead and move the design, even with the frame still on the hoop. Continuous hoop. Available for your machine, probably. Magnetic frame, if you have a newer machine, probably. Remember, it might need to be updated, but the store can help you with that. Questions? Call the store. They're here to help, right? Call the store. Make sure if the frames can fit your machine, see if you want to get one. See if you need to update. It's going to be pretty simple. So I'm just going ahead and stitch this on out. I want to thank you for joining me today. I had a pretty good time. I think I've really gussered up my little summer robe. I'm going to send it off to George. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the Altair. Remember, it has that continuous border feature. Even if you don't have an extra hoop, it's a pretty powerful feature, even if you're going to use just the hoops that came with the machine. Thanks for watching me today. I really appreciate it. Take it away, George. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. Don't forget, you can click on a, the link and download Kathy's lesson guide on today's presentation. But I want to take a couple moments to share with you my favorite features on the Baby Lock Altair. I believe the Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine on the market. There are machines that sell for thousands of dollars more that do not offer the same features. You know, the embroidery features are incredible. The nine and a half inch by 14 inch embroidery area, you can really uh, expand your horizon with embroidery and there's 494 built-in designs. You also have that 10.1 inch color screen that gives you all kinds of editing capability from color to sizing to also, you can actually take designs and do automatic stippling around it. It has 30 built-in fonts and 
five jumbo monograms. Now with the fonts, you have all kinds of editing capability. You can even take and put in a, a name or a saying and then do an applique border and turn it into applique automatically. It also has the IQ Designer. Now, this is an app that you use your smart device like a phone uh, or an iPad, and you can send an image, a graphic image to the machine, and it will turn it into embroidery instantly. The embroidery is amazing, but what about the sewing and quilting? This machine has 11.25 inches of space and five inches of height, so you can fit even the largest quilts into this machine. It also has automatic fabric sensors that will sense the thickness of the fabric so it will set the right pressure and with the automatic tension it gives you perfect fabric control from heavy denim to very sheer fabric to working with elastic or even a t-shirt collar. This machine truly controls the fabric with perfection but also it has the digital dual feed. And that what that does is that is a belt-driven uh, uh, walking foot system that's controlled by the motor of the machine. And you can control even like here with this Minky perfectly. So you have so many amazing features with this machine. But what about an amazing deal? The MSRP, the manufacturer suggested list price of this machine is $10,999. And it's worth that for all the amazing things that it does. We right now have it on sale for $79.99. And we're offering free shipping across the United States. Plus, we have interest-free payments of $167 per month. That is, makes this machine very affordable. But wait, that's not all. For a limited time, and while we have it in stock, we are offering a special bonus with your Altair purchase. So first, we're gonna give this beautiful set of 63 spools of polyester embroidery thread. This, the beautiful shine and quality of this thread is quite amazing. Also, I'm including uh, the Baby Lock Ultimate Stabilizer Bundle. This has the, uh, the most popular rolls of stabilizer from wash away to cut away in different colors. And this will enhance your embroidery to give you a better quality. I'm also including the Baby Lock Altair Inspirational Guide. Now, the instructions on this machine is wonderful, but what's different about the ins Inspirational Guide, it is written by Baby Lock educators. Assuming you know nothing about the machine, so it takes you through every aspect, giving you uh, full color. It's, it's over 300 pages of full color description, step-by-step -step description. And if you complete this uh, Inspirational Guide, you truly know everything on this machine. We're including that. Plus, we're gonna include a online membership to Baby Lock's Love of Knowledge. This has hundreds of videos that give you step-by-step -step details on how to use the machine and also do techniques. This is invaluable and you get a membership to this as well. You also get our famous rose gold scissors. Uh, this, these scissors are wonderful, both the shears and the embroidery shears. But last and not least, we put together a very exclusive design bundle by Anita Good Design. It has 17 different collections and it comes with over uh, 400 design files. And it's truly amazing the variety you get with this. So all this, which equals over a $1,600 value is free with your Altair purchase for a limited time. Now we will run out of these supplies, so this is while supplies last. So click on the link to order, or you can call us at 1-800-865-9664. You can email me at moreso at aol.com. But don't wait, this deal will surely end. But if you have any questions, again, call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.